gives me great pleasure to welcome you today to Hooding 2020. I want to congratulate our graduates for their outstanding work that sees them here today receiving their hoods from MCG faculty. I want to congratulate their families and friends who've supported them throughout this journey. I want to thank the faculty that have worked so hard to teach them and educate them to be the best doctors possible. And finally, I want to encourage you to continue to stand up to challenges, to meet those challenges, and to exceed those challenges in the coming months and years during your training. Congratulations again. Hi, I am Shelley Nuss and I serve as the campus dean at the Medical Partnership. I bring greetings from our faculty and staff. Congratulations to the class of 2020. This is the seventh class of 40 students to graduate from the four-year Medical Partnership campus located in Athens, Georgia. At the heart of our campus is our student learning experience taught by passionate and dedicated faculty. Our collaborative relationship with the University of Georgia and with our community agencies have strengthened our campus and has created an unparalleled learning opportunity for our students to learn and grow. Thank you to the faculty, staff, senior administrators, and most importantly, to family and friends for their ongoing support. Please don't let our challenging times get you down. Be proud of the work you have accomplished and you know that you are very prepared for an amazing long career in medicine. Lastly, as you leave MCG, please remember, put the patient at the center of your focus and bring to the bedside, not only your knowledge and technology, but also your humanity, caring and concern. From all of us at the Medical Partnership, congratulations to you, the class of 2020. Please savor and cherish this moment. We are all so proud of you. And as they say in Athens, go dogs. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Brooks Keel, and I'm the president of Augusta University. And it is my pleasure indeed to say congratulations to you, the Medical College of Georgia class of 2020. There's no question we're in most unusual and uncertain times. Uh, and as a community, uh, as a university, and as a medical school, we're all dealing with the COVID-19 crisis. You will be forever known as the class of COVID-19. Don't let this define you. Rather, embrace what is happening to you and to our community at this time. You have chosen this profession, the profession of helping people. This experience is going to make you a better physician. It's going to make you a more caring physician. It's going to make you a more skilled physician so that if we ever have to face this sort of situation again, you're going to be the best prepared to deal with it. We are so incredibly proud of each and every one of you because you have taken this uh, situation, this crisis, uh, you have helped this community in such important ways and you have learned from it. So on behalf of the entire uh, Jaguar Nation, the entire family of Augusta University and the Medical College of Georgia, I want to say to you, thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for choosing the Medical College of Georgia. Congratulations to you, best wishes and go Jags! Hello, graduates of the Medical College of Georgia. While this is definitely not the way I was looking forward to being with you for this special moment in your life, I'm nonetheless so glad to have had this opportunity to say how very proud I am of each one of you. Congratulations. At one time or another during these past few years, I expect you've heard me talk about the core values we share as an institution, as a university community. Collegiality, compassion, excellence, inclusivity, integrity and leadership. So now, in this time of great celebration, I'd ask you to reflect for a moment on all the ways, intentionally or not, that you've demonstrated these values during your time as students here. In moments when you were interacting with your classmates, in hours of working to acquire the knowledge and skills of your profession, and in those special encounters with your first patients. Thank you for living our values. And my next request then is to ask that you continue to hold these values close to your heart in the days and years going forward. To take all that you've learned and experienced and gained in your time with us and to be the most collegial, compassionate, excellent physician you can be. Practicing and leading with the utmost integrity and embracing inclusivity in all its wondrous dimensions. Once again, congratulations and best of luck in what I know will be your very bright future. 
Today, you become a physician. You will go forward from this moment to do great things for your profession, your patients, and your community. Like so many Medical College of Georgia graduates, many of you will become leaders across the state and across this nation. It is a proud, nearly 200-year-old legacy that you will continue. Your hooding ceremony today symbolizes the culmination of the hard work you have already done. Please be proud and don't let the fact that we could not be together today diminish this moment for you. You have earned it. Thank you again for making MCG your medical school. We will always be here for you. When I was invited to speak at your hooding ceremony, I jumped at the chance. Little did we know then that a new virus would emerge bringing the world to a standstill. Almost 40 years ago, I stood where you are, listening to our hooding speaker, challenging us to make a difference in our world. That call to arms continues to spur me forward in my work and in my advocacy. Never in a million years would I have thought that it would lead me to where I am today, advocating as president of the American Academy of Pediatrics. You graduate into a world no one could have imagined, a world I would not have wished for you but a world that is starving for new ideas and leadership and is yours to remake. The challenges are dawning, but you should not be daunted. You made it here today because you are smart and you are brave and you care. You have been immersed here at the medical college and tending to the vulnerable and marginalized, serving as beacons of light for those whose lives have gone dark, shining in secret, giving your all when no one is watching, to those who can offer you nothing. You already know what it takes most people a lifetime to learn, that if you want to be your best, you have to see the worst, and that rock bottom can be a solid foundation upon which to build a better future. As physicians, the work you do each day will make thousands of differences, many you may never know about. Yet it is in those moments when you confront truth at its harshest and hope at its most powerful that change is possible. The coronavirus has laid bare a deep-rooted system of haves and have-nots, and all its soul-crushing medical, social, and economic consequences. It calls us to confront those inequities and challenges us to ensure we not only survive the pandemic, but survive in a world worth living in. When we get to the other side, we will have an unprecedented opportunity to get rid of broken systems and structures that serve an old set of interests and a wrong set of values. To remake the world and our health system into one where every person can be healthy and have a bright future. To take us places we have never been and succeed in ways we have never dreamed. No, you do not graduate into a world I would have wished for you, but terrible events can open up oceans of possibilities. The good news is we now have physicians like you to lead the way forward. I cannot wait to see where you take us. Congratulations on your amazing accomplishment and welcome to the best and the most noble profession in the world. During this segment of our program, we have the opportunity to recognize several outstanding members of our faculty and senior class. The John F. Beard Award is intended to honor the highest ideals and achievements in compassionate health care. Uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. Uh, David Hess, the Dean of the Medical College of Georgia, and myself, I want to thank you for joining us. And it really is our pleasure to be able to speak with you today, and even in what is obviously an unconventional matter. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I, I appreciate it. Absolutely. We're glad to have you. Uh, every year we solicit nominations from one of our most prestigious awards, the John F. Beard Award. Nominees for this award are submitted to the University Senate and representatives from the Senate make the final selection. This is one of the most prestigious awards given annually to any student. A composite plaque listing past recipients moves around campus. It's housed in the College of that year's student recipient uh, and it currently resides in the College of Nursing. I'm very pleased to report that uh, after today, the composite plaque will move to the Medical College of Georgia, and your name will be the newest addition to this plaque. The John F. Beard Award is a 40,000 annual award given by the William Porter Billy Payne and his wife Martha to a graduating medical, nursing, or health sciences student who exemplifies caring and compassion in healthcare. 
The award was established in 1998 in memory of Mrs. Payne's father, who died of cancer in 1997. The award honors President Emeritus Francis J. Tedesco and Mr. Beard's physician, Dr. Mark F. Williams, a 1988 Medical College of Georgia graduate who treated uh, Beard during his hospitalization at AU Health. The nominations uh, submitted on your behalf were resounding, uh, and you were described by everyone as having an outstanding compassion and as being a leader in patient and family center care. You have exemplified outstanding leadership for the class of 2020 and have tirelessly volunteered with incoming students and international medical mission trips. For the purposes of this award, however, we are primarily concerned with your qualities that, stem, that demonstrate the hallmarks of what the award is all about, that is caring and compassion in healthcare. And without question, these are areas in which you shine. The Associate Dean for Student Affairs wrote the following uh, about you. One of the most obvious personality traits throughout medical school was his enthusiasm and total compassion exhibited towards the lives of all that he touched. He always displayed a deep, innate sense of caring at the highest level. Other doctors, fellow students, patients, and patient family members also wanted to share numerous observations that, that demonstrate a superior uh, level of compassion that you exhibit. And among these are the following, and I'm quoting, Taking time after clinic closing to assist clinic staff with the medical concerns when on a medical mission trip to Egypt. Going to visit patients even on his non-rotation days to ensure that they feel at ease when receiving care. Checking in on a patient so diligently after surgery and making such an impact with his kindness and care that at every follow-up appointment or radiation treatment visit, the patient would ask how Kurt was doing selfishly investing in other students so that they might be able to provide better patient care. After completing a rotation, he would share advice with other classmates on what books he found to be helpful and, and helpful study resources. He once sat down with me for an hour to prepare me for my upcoming rotation. Another nominator wrote, he is patient with the young, old, emotionally distraught, depressed, lonely, or the sick. He takes the time to listen to everything that may be going through whatever it may be, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. In another instance, an MCG curriculum coordinator summed up your dedication, knowledge, and compassion and compassionate nature uh, as follows, quote, he is my gold standard for ideal human behavior. I look forward to his pursuits as a physician and will always be proud to call him a friend. Above all, all of your recommendations carry the same message, and that is the highest honor to any physician, and that is, I would trust him to take care of any of my family members and friends. Kurt, you have consistently expressed gratitude and thankfulness for your patients, showing unceasing compassion for those enduring the most trying of diagnoses. One recommendation stated that Kurt has chosen the right profession. He makes being a medical student look easy. <laughs> That's got to be a trick. He has a natural ability to put people at ease. He shows kindness and respect to other staff members. He's a good problem solver. It is highly likely that each of us at one point in our lives has or will need the care of a kind and caring physician. And it is my sincere hope that we each are cared by, for someone, by someone with the compassion uh, and the concern that you, uh, that you possess. And now it is my distinct honor to officially recognize you as this year's recipient of the prestigious John F. Beard Award. Kurt, we want to extend to you our heartfelt congratulations. Thank you for being such an outstanding representative of our values here at Augusta University and the Medical College of Georgia. And although I can't hand you this plaque, I can at least show you. This is, this is the plaque. Uh, we're going to be shipping it to you. Uh, you will also receive the monetary award with this, but uh, I, I can't tell you how proud we are of you, uh, how you have represented yourself, your family, and how you have represented the Medical College of, of Georgia is exemplary, and we're very, very grateful to you for that, and, and I offer you my own personal hearty congratulations, and thank you so much, and with that, I'm going to turn things over to Dean Hess, so I'm sure we'd like to have a, a few opportunities to say a few words as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Keel. Congratulations, Kurt. It, it is a great honor. This is really the, the great award uh, in, in, uh, in AU, um, and we're very proud the medical school has it. And I'm sure the people in Rome and the Northwest campus are excited, too. You know, these, these campuses are a little bit competitive, so I'm sure that Leonard is going to, you know, tell the other 
deans right. very quickly that you won this award. And, and your letters were outstanding. You know, Dr. Brock and, and many others up there who we know really think very highly of Dr. Seals, almost too many to, to mention, but these are factors that we value and, and they really uh, think you're fantastic. So congratulations, you're, uh, you're a real credit to us. We're super proud of you. And now um, it's your turn. You only have 15 minutes to speak, so go ahead, Kurt. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm really at a at a loss for words. I'm incredibly honored. I mean, thank you so much. I, you know, I, as as you guys know, the you know, I think we really have the best faculty, and I think it's one thing to. Um, one thing to learn medicine, and I think it's another thing to really be able to see physicians who are modeling the the type of care that you want to give. And I think that that's something that I have been so thankful to see is is people that are in practice, kind of acting in a way and caring for patients in a way that I would want to be cared for, and, and really make it easy to see a clear direction. And um, I'm just so honored to have the opportunity to learn from all of them. And um, even through some of this, uh, the pandemic medicine elective that's been going on, had an opportunity to even talk with, uh, or at least hear from some members from the Southwest campus in Albany and just got off the phone with a physician at the Southeast campus in Savannah. And so just seeing across the state, the high level of character and integrity of the physicians that are taking care of us is just unbelievable. And so uh, uh, thank you so much. I really have <laughs> uh, no, no way to express my, my gratitude and, and how humbling and, and what an honor this is. Um, I, I'm very, very appreciative. And, and we wish you well in New Orleans. I think you're gonna go into otolaryngology, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, that's correct. It's pretty, uh, the, the pandemic is pretty severe there now, but hopefully by the time you start it, we'll have subsided some. Yes, sir. I hope so. I, thankfully, we've kind of been in touch with a lot of the faculty there, and it sounds like they are um, certainly being pushed, but, but the, mm -hmm. not overwhelmed, that they've got a good um, handle, they've got good support, and, and that they're making it through it. So um, I'm certainly excited to, to get started in a couple months and help. I would just ask you to consider one thing, that you come yes, back sir. and join our faculty or come back to Georgia when you're done training, okay? <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Well, Kurt, I think the best way you could express your appreciation to, to this award and to the, the Payne family and, uh, is to continue doing what you're doing. Uh, you, as I said, you represent us and yourself incredibly well. I know your family's very proud of you. We're very proud of you as well. Uh, and we look forward to watching your career. And as Dr. Hess said, we hope we can watch that career first time with you back here at Augusta. So <laughs> take good care of yourself. Yes, stay healthy. Stay well. Uh, and, uh, yes, and sir. Thank you so much for everything you do and how you represent Medical College of Georgia. Appreciate it very much. Congratulations. Yes, sir. And, and you as well. Thank you. I, I really appreciate your time. You bet. Glad to. All right. Bye bye care, now. Kurt. Thank you. There you go. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you now. The Physician's Physician Award is presented to graduating medical students who demonstrate the greatest aptitude for and devotion to the profession of medicine. This year, both campuses voted for the individual who they would most likely seek out after appropriate training as a personal physician. The individuals chosen have demonstrated empathy, grace, and teamwork throughout their clinical training. It is my pleasure to present this year's Physician's Physician Awards to Kurt Mueller, MD, from the Augusta campus. At the Athens Partnership campus, we would like to recognize Dr. Kenneth Hearn as the Physician's Physician recipient. Congratulations, Kurt and Kenneth. It is now time to present the Gold Humanism Honor Society presentations for the Leonard Tao Award recipients. The Leonard Tao Humanism and Medicine Awards recognizes the ideals of outstanding compassion in the delivery of care, respect for patients, their families, and healthcare colleagues, as well as demonstrated clinical excellence. This year, two students and two faculty members were selected to receive the award. 
The awards are sponsored by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation. On the Augusta campus, it is my pleasure to recognize Zoe Athens, MD, as the student recipient. It is my pleasure to recognize Dr. Jennifer Tucker as the recipient of the Leonard Tao Humanism and Medicine Faculty Award for the Augusta campus. On the Athens campus, it is my pleasure to recognize Kenneth Hearn, MD, as the student recipient of the Leonard Tao Humanism and Medicine Award. Please join me in recognizing Dr. Scott Richardson as the recipient of the Leonard Tao Humanism and Medicine Faculty Award for the AU-UGA Medical Partnership. Earlier in the academic year, two faculty members were selected as Educator of the Year at their respective campuses. Please join me in recognizing Dr. Lisa Leggio, Professor of Pediatrics, as Educator of the Year for the Augusta campus. At the Athens Medical Partnership campus, Dr. Carrie Kelly was recognized as Educator of the Year. She is an Assistant Professor in the Department of Pediatrics.
Please join me together in reciting the Hippocratic Oath. I do solemnly swear by that which I hold most sacred that I will be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members, that I will lead my life and practice my art in uprightness and honor, that into whatsoever home I shall enter it shall be for the good of the sick and the well to the utmost of my power, and that I will hold myself aloof from wrong and from corruption and from the tempting of others to vice that I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my patients and the prevention of disease, and I will give no drugs and perform no operation for a criminal purpose, and far less suggest such a thing, that whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of men and women, which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviolably secret. These things I do promise, and in proportion, as I am faithful to this oath, may happiness and good repute be ever mine, the opposite if I shall be Forsworn. Congratulations. Hello. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben Daniel. I'm the president of the Athens Campus Class of 2020. It's been an honor to share the name and experience of MCG with all of you as we have strived upward to new heights together in our personal and professional achievement. Congratulations to all of your tremendous accomplishments. Behind us lays a steep and treacherous trail of obstacles we have already overcome from academic challenges ranging from exams to practicals to more important things such as patient-centered attempts at fighting disease and providing emotional support. The fires of this formative process have acted as a crucible in which parts of us have grown and become more defined while other pieces have been burned off. I know I am not alone when I say I am a fundamentally different person now than when I entered medical school. We've been chiseled and strengthened through this process, for as we reach the top of this mountain that we call medical school, we find ourselves at the foot of another climb. Here and now, let us take a moment at this new base camp to congratulate ourselves on the things we've already accomplished while simultaneously preparing for the next stage of each of our journeys. You all have absolutely earned the recognition you're receiving today. You are an incredible, an awe-inspiring group of people. Still, the medical path is a funny thing. Throughout medical school, you work remarkably hard for four years to earn the right to become a doctor and work even harder in your residencies and career. To an outsider, this can seem preposterous and is part of the reason I find you all so inspiring. After all, where is the beach time with the cocktail umbrella drink? It's hard to find. With this in mind, it is important to remind ourselves of the guiding light that drives us through this work and toil, that pushes us through sleepless nights, desire to help and aid the sick and injured. In the coming months, we are about to undergo a fundamental restructuring of how we view success. For the first time in almost two decades, grades will not be a defining metric of success for us. In this coming time of reformation, I challenge you all to reorient yourselves away from winning and losing, away from A's and B's, away from passing and failing, and towards a more applicable framework for success, the following, minimizing the suffering and pain of your patients. As you spend the next years fighting vigorously upward to climb through residency, let not the winds of envy and pride sway you from the path. Let the light of patient-centered care guide you ever forward to reach continuously towards the ultimate peak of success in medicine by putting your patient's needs and wants before yourself. Thank you and congratulations. Good afternoon to my favorite new doctors, the class of 2020, and welcome to any family, friends, and faculty who are watching today. I hope that this message finds you all safe and well in these uncertain and unprecedented times. I must say that this is certainly not the stage I pictured for us on this day. In fact, if you asked us a year ago how we would be spending this time leading up to graduation, most of us would say that we would be traveling internationally, some would be getting married, others touring apartments and houses in their new places of residence. 
By this point, we all have probably adopted our own quarantine routine to help us get through each day. My daily activities consist of sitting on my couch with my cat and watching reruns of Law & Order, the good Law & Order, uh, with the occasional walk here and there. The importance of social distancing cannot be overstated as it truly does save lives. However, we cannot deny that the fact that social distancing can often feel like social isolation especially during a time when we want nothing more than to be surrounded by the people who loved us through all of the trials and tribulations of medical school and are the reason we are here today. No FaceTime or Zoom session can replace seeing the beaming faces of our loved ones in person or receiving a warm congratulatory hug. For me, this quarantine has afforded an abundance of time for thinking and reminiscing on our time here at the Medical College of Georgia. It is the memories of our time spent together, learning, growing, failing, and succeeding that get me through these days. So I'd like to take some time to reflect on some of those memories. I vividly remember the first day of medical school when we walked into the Harrison Education Commons for the very first time. We were all struck by how incredibly cold the classroom was, so cold that we quickly discovered who in our class had Ray Nod syndrome and Hannah Hemphill started the trend of bringing a personal blanket to class. The freezing temperature of the classroom was made bearable by the warmth and kindness radiating from each individual sitting in it. As we entered this new chapter in our lives, we quickly realized that the only people who knew what we were going through were the people sitting right beside us. And thus, the class of 2020's journey began. Our first year of medical school was a year of survival. While we were learning how to be professional students, we were also learning how to drink from the metaphorical fire hydrant that was CMBM, TMSK, and of course, Dr. Prom, without drowning. We learned how to interact with patients in the standardized setting, and I personally discovered that there is no left liver on abdominal exam. We all survived this all together, and we celebrated our victories as we knew that when we were second year medical students, we would find ourselves a little preoccupied with some tests that no one's really ever heard of. So as second year medical students, we learned how to successfully retain information while watching Echo on two times speed. We discovered that watching sketchy videos on a Friday night was just as entertaining as watching Netflix or Hulu. And whenever we were feeling overwhelmed by everything that we had to do, we knew that the inspirational quotes that Dr. Fisher put in all of his lectures would brighten our spirits. When it came time for my classmates and I to enter our third year of medical school, we couldn't be more thrilled to wash our white coats, some for the very first time, so that we would look official when we saw real patients in the hospitals or clinics. Each rotation brought with it new and valuable learning opportunities. For example, while on surgery, we learned that you must resist the temptation to scratch your head, no matter how much it itches, while on medicine, we learned which business casual shoes provide the most comfort and support for five to six hour long rounds. And while on pediatrics, many of us learned how to properly change a diaper for the very first time. During our third year, many of us also experienced moments that we will never forget. Moments like helping to deliver your first baby and realizing that shoe covers are the greatest invention of all time. Moments like getting to tell a patient that she's cancer free. Moments when you watch a family celebrate because their loved one's surgery was successful. Moments where you see your, un, your first unsuccessful code. Moments where you and your team provide comfort to a patient with progressive and debilitating disease. These are the moments that humbled us, made us fall in love with a particular specialty, and reminded us why we wanted to be doctors in the first place. As fourth year medical students, we took our role as senior medical students very seriously as we sought to develop more robust assessment and plans for our patients, serve as teachers to our junior colleagues, and of course, take Dr. Etheridge's ultrasound elective. We learned how to navigate the different airports and public transportation systems of the cities we visited on interviews and sub subsequently matched at residency programs across the country. Which brings me to today. As we prepare to add a few letters after our name, exchange our short white coat for a longer one, and finally get some type of reserved barking, I am humbled and honored to think that very soon we will be someone's doctor. Some of our patients will know us as the person who takes away their pain. Others will know us as the person who gives them hope, the person who advocates on their behalf, the person who they can trust with some of the most private 
and intimate aspects of their life. And what a wonderful gift that is. Class of 2020, I'm so proud of you. I could talk for hours about all of your accomplishments and all of the reasons that you will make fantastic physicians, but I truly only have five minutes. You all are undeniably and unequivocally some of the most remarkable individuals I've ever met. You will undoubtedly become leaders and pioneers within your field. During our time at MCG, we've seen people fall in love. We welcome babies and fur babies. When we arrived at MCG, we were colleagues. But now, as we say our goodbyes, we leave as family. And that, that is the reason I believe this quarantine has been so difficult, as we have not had the opportunity to say goodbye to the people with whom we've shared this exhilarating journey. But it is evident that our patients need us now more than ever. And I truly believe, class of 2020, that we can be a glimmer of hope in the darkness. Where there is suffering, we will seek to comfort. Where there is injustice, we will seek to fight it. Where there are vulnerable populations, we will seek to advocate on their behalf. To my fellow new doctors, thank you for reading my lengthy emails and for inspiring me every day. The world is about to gain an incredible group of human beings whom I believe will be a catalyst for change. I hope you look back on our time at MCG and smile, because I sure have. There is truly no other group of people I'd rather virtually celebrate with today. Thank you, congratulations, and go 2020! Good morning and congratulations class of 2020. Congratulations, guys. Good luck on your future endeavors. You guys are going to do awesome. All right. Represent MCG wherever you go. We love you and congratulations. Hello. My name is Dr. Turner Rents, and I'm the dean of our Southeast Campus in Brunswick and Savannah. I'm sorry we can't all be together, but this day is no less significant or important for you. During these trying times, you've all shown that you have the intelligence, professionalism, compassion and grit that it takes to become a physician. Congratulations to the class of 2020. To my Southeast students, let me add that I could not be happier or more proud of you. You not only maintained your academic studies, but gave of your time for your classmates, your patients, and your community. You've earned the title of doctor and physician I am proud to have you as my peer and colleague. I expect great things from you in the future. Stay in touch and congratulations again. Congratulations, class of 2020. Know that every one of you is going to be missed. These last few months have been challenging for all of us and for some more than others, but history informs us and we can learn from history. Pandemics are not a new phenomenon. Two of the worst pandemics to date were the Spanish flu and the plague. In 1918, over 500 million were infected with the flu and up to 50 million people died. In the 1300s, Yersinia pestis caused a plague that ravaged the world, leading to 75 to 200 million deaths. To put this in perspective, somewhere between 30 and 60% of Europe's population actually died. Despite what we see around us in the world with COVID-19, we recognize things could be worse. So with this in mind, I implore you to stand up, to lift up your heads because redemption is coming. As with smallpox, the plague, the flu, these all have been mitigated or attenuated to some level. And I have no doubt that things will eventually normalize in the state, in the country, and around the world. Redemption draws nigh. Towards closing, I want to go ahead and share a paraphrased quote from Sir William Osler, the father of modern medicine. While medicine is to be your vocation, your calling, see to it that you also have an avocation, some intellectual, physical, or spiritual pastime 
which may serve to keep you in touch with the world, with your friends, with your family, or with your God, and also to keep you in touch with perfect wellness. Cultivate and maintain interests and endeavors other than the purely professional for the hard-working resident who refreshes, heals, and cares for others must also remember to refresh, revive, and also to recharge themselves. Lastly, as a graduating physician of MCG, know that you are the best of the best. And I'm gonna repeat that. You are the best of the best. As you go forth in your education, we encourage you to continue to shine in residency, in fellowship, and beyond with the same light that you have shown at MCG. Go forth and shine. On behalf of the regional campus deans from around the state and the class deans here in Augusta, we want to congratulate you. We have, as faculty and students, arrived at this day with immense pride. COVID has literally canceled your in-person celebrations for match and hooding. With creativity and resilience, we are still celebrating each and every one of you. You, the class of 2020, are diverse in makeup and came to medical school from 51 colleges and universities. Now, you are our newest class of physicians and armed with an unprecedented level of resilience, you're destined for bright futures. You matched into 33 specialties and 31% of you will stay here in Georgia. 61% of you will join primary care programs, including internal medicine, pediatrics, and family medicine. You will undoubtedly make us proud, and we will be even prouder if you come back home to Georgia to practice. President, provost, deans, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests, this concludes the hooding ceremony for the 184th graduating class of the Medical College of Georgia. Congratulations.